Hello everybody, welcome to day number 10 of the 30 day couch to handstand challenge. Today I have my mother's dog here that I'm taking care of. He's called Puck, like the Puck in Midsummer Night's Dream. And uh, you're gonna practice with us. I'm Natalie and I teach the art of hand balancing and today we're gonna dive deeper into shoulder and core stability and repeat some of the halfway handstand exercises we did in the last video. So we start again with a little warm-up finding our center line of balance standing upright. So today we are not going to start by rolling the shoulders, but again, let's get used to just checking in with our natural feeling for balance, which we use every day when we're standing upright. A long time ago when you were a child, it was very complicated to find this upright alignment. And now it's really become second nature to you. You don't even realize all the posture muscles that are active in keeping you upright. So in a way, when you're learning to invert yourself, it's a very similar process. It takes a long time and a lot of patience by switching on the posture muscles that are needed to keep yourself upright in a handstand. So it's useful to always check in with your center line of balance that you just naturally have when you're standing up. So that's what we're always doing when we're starting our practice. So if you want, you can close your eyes here, but you can also stay with me and very aware. To just notice how your hips are stacked above the ankles and the shoulders above the hips. The head is floating on top and you can imagine that you have a thread uh, attached to the crown of your head, it's pulling you a little bit higher up, kind of making your spinal column even float in the air while your feet are planted firmly into the ground. And now if you would like to take a bit of an experiment with me, just shift your weight forwards and notice how your toes naturally engage and your body is renegotiating its alignment. And then shift back to your center and then just slightly shift to the back and notice what happens in your body, especially in your calves and, and in your feet, in order to maintain balance. So that is what is happening to us upside down, just the same way that we need to engage our fingers and at the same time really press into the ground. Okay, from here, let's step the legs apart a little bit further than straddle. I mean, you need to make a little bit of space for me now. So we're going to swing our arms now from side to side. So really allow for a gentle swing. So I'm just moving my shoulders from side to side. And at the same time, I'm throwing my arms, giving them a little swing here. So if you want to take this down even further, you can just move the arms in a really controlled way from side to side here. A very controlled way just right and left and right and left and then you can give that a bit more of a swing and pat yourself on the back when there's the rebound of the swing so this is a very nice and gentle way to warm up your spine and get a little bit of a rotation and a twist in there in a very gentle playful way and we also do need a bit of core engagement for this because every time you move your shoulders from side to side, you have to engage your core to initiate that momentum. So just pay attention to that for a couple of seconds. And now, today we're not going to do the shoulder circles, but instead we are going to take a circle in front of us so a circle straight in front of you, yeah? So you kind of want to imagine your arm is moving on a plane, on a, on a plane surface in front of you and on a plane surface behind you. 
So just watch, this can be a little bit tricky to coordinate in the beginning, but it's really not that difficult and it's a little bit like cycling. Once you've got it, you are never going to lose it again. So I imagine that I've got a plane behind me and then my arm goes from the bottom. And really imagine you're stroking a wall behind you here. A big surface behind you and a big surface here in front of you. So it's like you've got a wall here to the back and to the front and you're creating arm circles. Naturally your body is going to move along with you a little bit in a sort of figure of eight movement. Yes, yeah? so there's a wall behind you, there is a wall in front of you. And then you can imagine the walls are coming a little bit closer so that your circles, your arm here, is just that tiny bit closer to you. So that's what it looks like. And let's do this for eight. One and two and three and four and five, six, seven and eight. So it's actually not that easy. You can feel that your muscles do engage. And this is a very good way to warm up your shoulders at the same time as keeping the shoulder joint healthy and the capsule lubricated. So let's do this on the other side. Now, um, try to find that coordination again. Imagine a wall in front of you, a wall behind you, and you are swishing your hand along the wall in front of you and then behind you. So brush your hand along the wall in front, behind, in front, behind. Very good. Okay, let's do this again. If you found the if you found the coordination for this movement, now let's do it again for eight. One and two and three and four. Move your body, the upper body, alongside it. Just allow five, six and seven allow your body to move along with the arm movement all right okay very good so from here just roll the shoulders back once and big circle back and big circle back let's open and close we did this exercise last week for our thoracic spine mobility so you just slightly bend the knees and then you curve and contract now you know this exercise a little bit better. Really pay attention to whether your arms are opening up to here, to the side or even below your shoulders or whether you've got them diagonally up here above you because this creates a very different stretch than this. This stretch here, you're going to feel it all across the front of your chest. So let's do this together for eight. Curve and open, curve, open, curve. Open, curve, open, curve, open and five, up, six, seven, eight. All right, okay. Let's warm up the hands a little bit. Let's find that shoulder opening again as we did in the last video with the stretch on the wall where you are placing your hands into a position where you can easily press into the wall and just find that shoulder opening. Find that shoulder opening, actively press into the wall. Don't just allow your head to drop, but really keep an active push here. Keep an active push into the wall, elevate your shoulders to your ears as well as trying to lower the stretch. You have to move a little bit. That's it. Right, let's warm up the wrists. So this time, just place the front of your fingers here on the floor and we're going to press the fingers, the back of the fingers into the floor and tilt the wrist up and we're going to try and 
So we're going to try and place the back of the fingers on the floor, press, so if this is the floor, you press the fingers into the floor as if you want to flip something away and you move the wrist up and down very gently. So you see I'm coming closer to the ground here and then I am flipping the wrist up while pressing my fingers here into the floor. So and I'm gently also rocking on my knees back and forth if this is uncomfortable for your knees. You can also sit cross-legged. It's mainly about exerting this, this, applying this push here, yeah, and really pressing into the ground while at the same time giving your wrists a little stretch. So I'm just moving them back and front while at the same, and it's a very gentle movement. Really, by all means, it's not a big um, stretch. I have a little micro bend in my elbows, and it's really about pressing the fingers into the floor and moving the wrist into an almost 90 degree angle, the opposite angle to this one, yeah? So that's what we're trying to find here the opposite angle of this one, this way round, press into the floor. Let's do this four, five more times, one, and two, and three, and four, and five, very good. Now let's place the palms on the floor and do the opposite movement. So we're pressing the fingers straight into the ground and we are lifting the palms so really apply pressure as if you want to push the mat or the floor away. Apply pressure, lift the palms. Just this much until a 45 degrees angle takes place here, yeah? Just a 45 degrees angle, lift up, but have a strong activation and a little bit of weight in the hands. So you really, it's not just kind of like playing the piano. It is taking a little bit of weight and pressing up through straight fingers. Let's do this for eight. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. Now, with a bit more weight, so we do this from an almost a halfway four point position. So again, tuck your toes under, and if this is a little bit, if this is challenging for your knees, just put a cushion underneath your knees. I'm kind of used to this position, and we do have to be in this position to execute the next exercise, but you can just place something soft there for your comfort. And now don't take your whole weight here above the wrists, but just stay slightly here, um, so that we can just figure out this movement, which is very good for strengthening the muscles in between the fingers. So now just prop yourself up onto your fingers, like a little spider, five-legged spider. Prop yourself up and then prop the other side up. Then we lower the left, then we lower the right. Prop the left up, prop the right up. Down, down. If you feel adventurous, Take a little bit more weight onto the hands. If not, you stay here slightly backwards, getting to know this exercise and up, up and down, down. Let's do this for eight. One and two and three and four, five, six, seven and eight okay so we leave it there for now tomorrow we are going to reverse it as well but if in any of the weight bearing exercises we do in these videos you experience pain in your wrist that usually is because the muscles in between the bones of your hand are not so well developed yet and that's quite natural but pain in weight bearing or in handstands usually comes from that so the muscular development in your hand and in your grip is is uh, lagging a little bit behind of the the rest of your muscular engagement in the body and the speed at which you learn so if you do experience pain in the wrist do these exercises and also the ones here where we open and close really every time before you practice and after some time your grip 
and the base of your hand here is going to be strengthened but it does take some time it doesn't quite happen um, in a week or two so just um, stay a little bit patient with that okay so from here now prop the feet under and let's press ourselves back into a halfway squat just here and rock back and forth gently taking weight onto the arms very gently taking weight rock back and forth back and forth now from here come back as much as you can you don't have to put the heels down on the floor maybe you have to be in this position here as well depending on where your flexibility is and just from here gently straighten the legs and then walk your hands out as far as you need them to be in order to accommodate for your level of flexibility from here now we're gonna step the right foot in the left foot in the right foot out the left foot out this gives you an opportunity to push the heel into the floor every time you step the leg back and this one here will also give you a little stretch do keep the knee bent here in in out out in in press the heel into the floor press the heel into the floor keep the knee bent keep the knee bent let's do this for 10 and when we've done five we're going to change direction so we'll step back with the other foot first so let's step with the right first back back front front for one back back front front for two back back push the heel into the ground front front for three back back front front back back front front now let's change direction left foot goes back first back back front front push the heels into the floor push the heels down bend the knees for three two more back back front front back back front front so now here just walk the knees into a slightly wider straddle position you can really keep them bent as much as you need them to be in order to be able to touch the ground so if that's here then that's here that's totally fine and then just gently rock from side to side making sure that your knee does not twist inwards inwards meaning this way you want to make sure your knee is aligned here above the big toe so if your knee twists inwards just be a bit more gentle on this movement yeah just find your range gently find your range of flexibility here now let's take it one step further and see if you can place one hand here on your thigh the other hand on the other thigh and here you can basically take the weight of your i'm out of the camera <laughs> So I'm gonna have to talk here. So place your weight. So this allows you to take the weight off your upper body slightly and just move slightly from side to side, gently opening up your straddle. All right, okay. And come back down onto the floor. Okay, so just find your way to the back we're going to do a couple of sit-up exercises here sit-ups again and um, I shouldn't even call them sit-ups because sit-ups always sounds really scary as if it's some crazy fitness move um, I prefer to call them gentle core engagement exercises um, even though strictly speaking they're sit-ups but um, so basically what I'm trying to say is um, just don't be put off by the idea of having to um, do conditioning exercises. This is really just about gently starting to activate muscles and over time these exercises go are going to get much easier and you will think back to them and wonder why you even felt like they were so hard at all. So the progress with like sit-ups 
and plank positions is actually quite fast. It's just the first time that you're doing them, the very first day and you're like, this is incredibly hard, my body can't take this, I am so unfit, I can't do this. So this happens to me too when I'm exposed to new conditioning exercises because I haven't found an efficient motor pattern yet to execute this exercise. But trust me and trust yourself that you will figure out a way that will make them significantly easier. So let's lie down on the back, interlace the fingers behind the head and lift the nose and the chin up to the ceiling for 15 together with me and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now lift the knees up and down trying to maintain a 45 degrees angle while at the same time pressing the lower back into the ground. And let's do this. Are you sniffing my feet? And let's do this for 20 together with me. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, come back to sitting. Let us find our way into the assisted plank position. So the assisted plank position is the one where we keep one knee down and we've got both hands on the floor. Try and take a little bit of weight off this hand so you don't support yourself so much and you kind of um, mainly have one hand on the floor but do keep the hand down if you feel like you need it. We're going to lift the hips so we're going to lower the hips to the floor and lift them up for 10. Yeah just lower them and lift them up for 10 together with me and one and two and three and four and five, and six, and seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. So you probably feel your arm, your shoulder muscles working and the sides. So this bit is very much about the side muscles as well. The key is to press the feet and the knee and the hands simultaneously into the ground. So swap sides, find your supported sideways plank position and let's lift it for one and two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Very good. Okay, great. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to introduce a new exercise now. Just have a look at this exercise, which um, starts again in this halfway handstand position, where we really try and push, elevate the shoulders, push them into the ground. And the next thing, so the next step from here is we will do a little skip. So we lift one foot, we skip to the other. And we skip, skip. Skip. Now, ideally, in between the skip, there is a moment of suspension. <laughs> so this may seem very far away for you now. Um, don't worry if that's still in the process, but try to find ease when you land. Try to make as little noise as possible when each foot lands on the ground. Let's attempt 10 skips and repeat this exercise twice. Find your way into the halfway handstand position. Lift the right foot and skip. Skip. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come down again to your knees. Take a deep breath. 
of relief that you've managed to do this for the very first time. Now, if you're feeling a bit adventurous and you want to have a bit of extra input, make sure that your shoulders are aligned above the wrists. Maybe after this episode, at some point, when you have a chance um, to have a full body mirror somewhere, you want to have a look at yourself in a mirror and, and find out what that feels like to have shoulders above the wrists. So in that case, you would just place yourself, or maybe with the camera, just place yourself on a sideways angle and check when is that shoulder above the wrist? When is it here? Because ideally we want to stay above the wrist the whole time. Let's lift it back up to a halfway handstand. Lift one foot off and skip. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. Okay, come down. Take a breath. Prepare your elevation. I'm going to use you as an elevation. Prepare your elevation. Prop it up against the wall if you need to. Now we're going to try and hold it for three times 10 seconds on this elevation in a halfway handstand. And you can now try to lift the hips up higher. So we're going to continuously do this halfway handstand on an elevation exercise throughout these, this second week. And the aim here is to, at some point, find your way into a complete elevation of having the hips here above you. So really take it step by step. It's also something that does require strength and courage, of course, to take it from here to there. And this process really requires you to check in. Where do I feel safe? And what do I do, need to do in order to continuously feel safe? The answer to that is usually you have to push into the ground, push your shoulders front or up, depending on the angle, but to elevate the shoulders and push into the ground. That is the key to being safe in these inversions. If you stop elevating the shoulders, and you collapse in your shoulders like this, you are starting to feel as if you're gonna fall to the front, your arms are starting to feel, the elbows are starting to feel as if they're gonna bend, and that's when you're kind of feeling like you can't hold it anymore, it feels really unsafe. So just pay attention to that. Okay, let's do it. Three times 10 seconds. Prop the feet up, second foot, Lift the hips as high as you need them to be. Let's stay here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come down. Take a breath. And the second one, let's not wait for too long. Handstand practice is also about intensity and upping the intensity by taking shorter breaks. So let's get into the habit of doing that and do this exercise here straight away. Prop your feet up and lift your hips as high as you need them to be. Stay here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come down. Great. Take a breath and another one. Now let's do this straight away again. Lift one foot, lift the other. Push your shoulders into the ground, stay here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and come down. Great. Now from here, just as we did yesterday, or whenever you did the last video, interlace the fingers behind you. Straighten your spine. 
push your elbows straight. Calm your breath. Take deep breaths in and out. And stay here with me. Make sure your shoulders aren't pulling up towards the ears. You want to press the shoulders away from your ears. Okay. Release the elbows. Release the fingers. Sit up again, straight spine. Push the shoulders away from the ears. Gently tilt the head to one side. Feel that gentle stretch. Handstand practice is about finding gentle and efficient stretches, finding joyful muscular engagement in the conditioning exercises. Come back to your center, take it to the other side. And handstand practice is about getting used to a new level of physical intensity in your body. Of muscular engagement that you haven't been used to before. Maybe even that burning in the muscles that seemed very threatening you, to you so far. To make friends with that, to embrace that and um, to find a joy, a joyful playfulness in playing with expanding your limits. Come back to the center. Keep your neck relatively neutral. Now just take the chin in towards you. So you kind of want to feel that your neck is getting longer. You're getting a very gentle stretch here across the back of your neck. Maybe you won't even press down on the back of your head a little bit, very, very gently. While keeping the shoulders pushed down away from the ears. Come back to your center. And now just gently lift the chin up, keeping a long neck, long spine, shoulders pressing away from the ears. And come back. Now one time, press your palms away from you into the ground, press the shoulders away from the ears, flex your hands, spread your fingers and feel that little sharp tingling across the fingers and forearms which are your nerves and release. One more time. Nerves running from the fingers through the forearms all the way until your spine. Isn't that quite a miracle? And press into the floor, press the shoulders away from the ears, flex your hands, spread the fingers. And release. Okay, so this was it. Today's practice. I hope to see you again in the next video tomorrow or the day after. And even you woke up just in time. <laughs>